Hi, so this is me. Hi, this is my setup. I'm going to explain to you a little bit about the winch system that I built just based on ideas on YouTube, other people's winches. Initially, it was a wake winch and a um, snowboard winch, but as there's not a lot of water near me or um, <laughs> a lot of snow, then uh, I just converted it to, with a secondary drum to accept um, different level of gearing to work uh, a power glider winch uh, a lot better. So here we have uh, the homemade uh, power glider winch. It's a life and nice nine horsepower engine made uh, a stainless steel frame. It's got <coughs> this is just temporary for the moment because I'm getting uh, making a power glide uh, power motor um, throttle control assembler, but uh, it's just um, throttle um, and a brake. It has removable drums. It can have adjustable gearing if I need it. Um, this comes off and my other drum comes on if I want to go um, snowboarding, wakeboarding. It's got um, a TAV2 um, torque converter with a custom made plate. So basically um, this is a clutch. Um, so the brake, we only use the brake when we're winding in, obviously because we don't want the line to, to shoot through all the mechanism. And uh, then if, if there's any problems, it will pay out of its own accord. Now, um, I did design this to accept a level of... Um, a level of hills if there was hills or was any elevation and whatnot and it needed to rise up with the rope then it would um, I've not used that idea now because um, I've, I've got a different method to avoid lockout so we'll just go down the line I'll show you that <coughs> so if you see it's not locked down it's just bedded into the ground it's not going to go anywhere purely because We've got a homemade pulley system now, so no matter where um, the, the, the pull force on this engine is, it'll just be redirected through this puller. And it's a split pulley system so I can thread the, the cable. The pulley itself, the wheel is from a weightlifting machine, so that's good for 200 kilos. And it's, it's nylon, just like the rope, so it, it, it should aid in less wear and tear. These are from local Home Depot, um, four quid, piled into the ring. So now, if we go down the field, you can see today's method is on, I've stretched half the line out to another puller, and I've brought the, the, the line all the way back to the winch. That way the winch operator can see um, exactly how the wing's inflated for the pilot, whether it's level, whether it's straight, whether the pilot's happy before he loads on the power. You can also check to see how the wind is. If you see that bloke walking by the windsock now, you can see that it's pretty dead, which is uh, ideal for what we're going to do. And um, then as long as we've got no um, east to west winds, because we're facing north at the moment, um, everything will be fine. And with a little east to west drift, then you can drift with the glider, but you always got a point to the focus point, which is that windsock. That's where the other pulley system is. So I'm not going to walk all the way across to that other pulley system because that, believe it or not, is about 600 feet away. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk to the end of the line and show you the systems that I've introduced to the end of the line. So we've got a homemade uh, drogue chute which is basically it was just a square bit of fabric a friend gave me. In the seam I threaded some strimmer wire, as you can see the strimmer wire there, and then a little bit of power cord connected in, in line with the cable, a little bungee clip. I use elastic band on that, so when it pulls out, it'll pull out nice and straight, but when it drops, the band, the, the band will loosen and the, and the drogue chute will open. Coming down to the first line of safety, we have um, 
This is called a swivel. Now this is, I bought this for a shark swivel, a shark fishing swivel. This swivel is designed to break at 110 kilograms. I bought 10 of them and tested 3 of them and they do break dead on 110 kilograms. So um, the idea being if we, we do have lockout and we do have um, a, a massive extra strain on the line and anything more than the pilot weight, um, this is going to snap. Um, I've welded some custom rings and I've made five um, because the, the rings are quite tiny on that. So um, that's the weak link and now we've got the um, quick release mechanism. There's the quick release bridle, obviously that clips into the harness and I can pull really tight. I don't know if you can see that, but the second I pull this, if you watch the rings, it disengages. So, um, safety-wise, we've got um, a beautiful open field. We've got a windsock. We've got um, a quick-release bridle. Secondilla, we've got an overload weak link. We've got the drogue chute so we can see the line, people can see the line coming down. We've got a pulley system anchored to the windsock right at the bottom there, so if you're flying from here, you just want to head for that windsock. Get as high as you can, click your legs a couple of times to let the operator know you're ready to release. As soon as he sees that, he'll throttle off a little bit just to stop the um, pendulum issues. And then hopefully you just uh, turn around a few times and just fly back. Um, that's really about it. That's that's the, the setup. Um, another, obviously, the, the obvious safety features, which I hope that um, people will just think, well, th this is natural, are of course. Look at your training harness. You've got your main harness. I've got my main main ring. I've got my ground handle wing. So I'll do a bit of ground handling prior to um, doing anything just um, to, to make sure that what I'm seeing and feeling is exactly is exactly what the glider can see and feel. And then of course we've got our radios, we've got our Vario, we, and we've got our wind meter. Um, so if I switch it on, today's wind, getting a bit of breeze on now, but Today's wind is 5, 6.4 down to 7, 6.5, 5.4 down to 5, 4, and we've got a lovely breeze coming on now, going up to 7. It's not been any more than 10 today, so I hope it doesn't rise to 10 while I'm videoing it, so it's law. So it's dying off. So that's a really nice breeze. I'm going to kite in this breeze before all my friends come so we can do some winching. As, as for the debriefing winching, um, the debriefing for the winch operator is as follows. Now, I'm changing the throttle cable on this to a paramotor throttle cable, but I'm also fitting a speedometer to the winch itself. So then, rather than a payout winch uses um, kilograms force to monitor um, line tension I'm just going to uh, work out um, through trial and error um, pilot weight to miles per hour pull on that barrel to then give me an idea of um, what's, what's over tension and what's not over tension um, we've already realised that a quarter throttle uh, with my wing and my weight will get me a steady 60 foot for um, a couple of hundred meters down this field so it, it's, it's going to be an easy calculation to figure out um, the um, the winch operator knows to learn about tension but mainly he needs to um, look at the wind look at the line and just be aware of lockout now um, people freak out about lockout winches and it is a serious thing it's a very serious thing but um, lockout occurs um, if if you've not been trained you don't know the safety features that you put in place 
like you've not got a quick release bridle for a start so how can you hunt up hook up you, you've not been taught when and where to how to identify a lockout so you don't know when to unhook and um you've, you've not got um a safety brake within the line so when it goes over tension it won't break and you, and you don't realize these things so the the main uh, winch operator just has to look for lockout if he can see lockout happening then all he has to do is throttle off the th the thing will level up and it will start to pay out of its own accord if um, we run out of line and it can't pay out then we just cut the line with a, a, a blade and that's purely if he doesn't use the, um, the the quick release system. So, as for what happens, what if? Um, I mean, um, there is a lot of uh, worries, worry buggers on the internet, but that that winch is not going anywhere. All the load is coming off that puller. It's not going to tip forward, backwards. It's not going to fly up. It's not going to fly down. It's just going to sew itself in. And as for the paraglider, the pilot himself. It, the basic commands is just going to hook up to this quick bridle. Is um, safety commander on the floor? Is going to check all his hooks, all his lines, all his connections. Is going to do a secondary debrief. Is going to assure himself that the pilot actually knows what's going to happen today, and understands what's going to kick off. And then, if it's a yes, 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 then the, the debriefing is. No matter what happens, you've got a head for that shackle, for that um, windsock. You can, the, the wind could drift you to the light, right, it could drift you to the left, that's fine, let it drift. Doesn't matter, it's all on a shackle, so the shackles will move 180 degrees, but you must always, to avoid lockout, aim for where the machine is pulling you at, which, for me, is that windsock. Um, if that's not the case and you don't do that, then the, the way that this shackle works and the way it's connected to your harness, it's connected at two points. So at, at the moment, because it's level, then you know full well your paraglider is going to fly in a straight line. But what about if you start to weight shift or twist your body? Then this is going to happen. So this is how lockout occurs. As, as soon as you start drifting off towards that point, so the, the pull point it's now twisted so you, you're getting more pull on this side and less on this side well that's exactly the same as weight shifting and the more it pulls you away the more it's going to weight shift and the more it's going to put you into trouble so the second that you st stray away from the main line going to um, the, the pulling force at the end of that uh, line then you're going to um, it, your lockout's going to increase and increase and increase you, you absolutely must be taught this you must be shown videos of lockout and you must have to, have to understand in your head exactly why lockout can occur you can still escape lockout if you're high enough if you pull that cord then you're just going to turn into the wind and land and um, if not it'll be a bumpy ride but it's the e in extreme for extreme sports it is what it is so, I'm waiting now for my friends to turn up, so we can uh, do some winching videos.